Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power by Come On Out, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. And I got another rant for you about this WNBA debacle of a Game 5 Finals game. Before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow it. Also, become a member. Become a member today as I will be creating membership content only. I need members to create it for. <laughs> so jump on and become a member for me, man. All right, will you? Appreciate it. And also jump on over to Rudy's Rant on YouTube, my other page. I'll be doing different types of videos there as well. And then, of course, if you haven't subscribed here, subscribe here now while you're at it. Don't wait because I know there's so many people that watch our videos that are not subscribers. So why not subscribe now? Check out what we got since you're watching it as it is. Topic at hand, Minnesota coach Cheryl Reeve blasts the WNBA referees and calls the game stolen. Uh, Cheryl, I would agree with you. I, I would agree with you. But listen to what Cheryl Reeve had to say in the post-game press conference following the game. You get away with stuff when you're physical and aggressive, and they certainly did. You know, sometimes you get away with stuff when you're physical and aggressive, and they certainly did. Um, you know, it's, it's a shame that officiating, you know, had such a hand in, in a, in a series like this. Um, obviously there's always going to be a team that's going to be a little more disappointed than the other. I thought today, uh, was incredibly disappointing. Um, the challenge, we, we have got to change our challenge rules and the official officials doing the game should have a third party because that was not a foul. That call should have been reversed on that challenge. If we sent that clip in, well, first of all, Nafisa Collier, number of times that she's held, et cetera, and there's there's nothing down that end, right? Which we, you know, it's it's kind of, you know, for whatever reason uh, in the series, that was kind of the way it was. But when at the other end, when when we challenged it, if we would have turned that clip in, they would have told us that it was marginal contact, no foul. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So when you review, those should be the same parameters that you're reviewing with. But the three people that are on the game need a third party to let them know because you know, that decided the game. You know, sometimes you get. There you go. That decided the game. That's what you heard it. You heard it directly from the coach's mouth. I'm so glad that she did that. Um, these are other things that she said. She also said, all the headlines will be Cheryl Reeve cries foul. Bring it on, Reeve said. Bring it on. Because this shit was stolen from us. Bring it on. I guess I guess the ESPN didn't want to post that part because it would make their game look bad. But yeah, that's what she actually said. Bring it, bring it on, because this shit was stolen from us. At the other end, of, at the other end, when they challenged it, it if, if we would have turned that clip in, as she said there, which you saw all of that right there. I did not know that a third party does not review. <laughs> this is another example of the shit show that the WNBA is. So in the NBA, when there's a review of a call, that goes to the to Jersey or New York or wherever they do their replay views. Why, why wouldn't that go to the same place for the WNBA? Why would you have some random official sitting on the sideline make that decision? I would I would disagree with Cheryl, Cheryl Reeve. I would disagree with her. That wasn't marginal contact. That was no contact. The contact was actually created by Brianna Stewart. There was no contact at all. The contact that existed was Brianna Stewart putting her shoulder into Alana Smith's chest. Alana Smith never touched her. So I would disagree with her there because there wasn't marginal. There was none. Um, Reeve also said, I saw a very physical and aggressive New York team. You, we know this from being a part of the games for so long, that sometimes you get away with this stuff when you're physical and aggressive, and they certainly did. It's a shame that officiating had such a hand in, in a series like this. I completely agree with her. John Quell Jones fouls every single time she has the ball around the rim. She just runs people over. She makes, she gives me reminders of Shaq without the, without the dunking. And what kills me about that specifically is that Shaq didn't 
commit the amount of fouls that he was really – Shaq got called for more so than he probably really did. But John Quell Jones is not doing what Shaq did. She's putting her arm around the back of her defender and holding her there. She did that at least three times. She got called for it once. I saw it happen at least three times. She just buries it, barrels in the people. And if I'm standing here and you just run into me, do I have to fall down on the ground to get a freaking charge call? Is that what it takes? See, that's what the – you want to know why people flop? People flop in basketball referees, just for all you referees out there. You want to know why people flop? They flop because you don't call charges unless their ass hits the ground. Because it shouldn't have to. If I'm standing right here and you smash into me, let me tell you something, man. I shouldn't have to fall down for that to be a charge. Because it's real interesting when you see screens, blindside screen set, player standing just like this, player runs into said player. This player ain't going nowhere. This player that ran in the screen hits the ground. And there's no foul called. Maybe there is sometimes they call it a moving screen, but it happened in this series. Perfect screen set. Girl hits the freaking screen, hits the ground herself because she didn't see it coming. It's like a knockout blow. This is no different. If I'm standing right here and you run into me, I should not have to fall on the ground for a charge call. But that's what the WNBA and the NBA have created an environment of. John Quell Jones ran people over over and over again. Brianna Stewart was fouling all game long. Leone Fibich fouling all game long. Sabrina Ionescu plays defense with two hands on your hips. I swear, if they don't have – people want to know about what, what, what hand checking looks like. Tonight was, a, tonight was an example of hand checking to the nth degree. Like, it was so bad. It was – and hand checking was done away with. Can't have two hands. And they had two hands on the hips of the freaking Minnesota Lynx players the whole game. She mentioned the Fisa Collier. The Fisa Collier gets fouled so often, it makes no sense. It makes no sense how much she gets fouled. They said this wasn't a foul. They call this a block shot. Look at where Sabali's arm is. Right here. It's on her arm. That is a foul. I don't care if she got some ball. You can't hit her across the arm. I, I'm, I'm like flabbergasted by this. Her arm, and she's behind her, no less. Arm hitting arm, also hitting ball, but hitting arm. That is a foul. That's one. This right here is from a video I did a few days ago after game three, where you have Thornton's hand on Collier's arm. I Trust me, it's on her arm. I've seen three different angles of it. I've rewatched it a bunch of times. Thornton's hand was on Collier's arm from the moment she went into the shooting, shooting motion. She fouled her immediately. Rana Stewart, who was supposedly playing such great defense, has her right arm, hand on Collier's left arm. There's no ball there. That's a foul. And then if you move it a little further along. Now you have this. Where they're claiming. They're claiming. That she high-fived her. Sweetheart, let me tell you something about the game. This is a hand on someone's wrist. This is not a high-five like this. She never touched the ball. I watched this a bunch of times. She hit her square across the freaking shooting arm, the same arm that was being hit down here, and is still being hit. If you take a look at the left hand of, of Thorne, it's still hit, touching her arm. But from here to here and here, they call this no foul. She got fouled three times on one play. One play. So pardon me if I don't have a problem with the officiating I saw for the duration of this series on Nafisa Collier. I completely agree with Cheryl Reeve in that regard because I watched it. And these are just a couple of blatant ones that were clear as day. There were fouls on Collier. 
the entire series. She somehow takes 22 shots. 95% of them are around the rim, but she never draws a foul. How? How is that possible? These guys shot 30%. They shot 30%, Reeves said. The difference was in the foul line. Yes. The WNBA sent the Liberty to the foul line the whole game. After the first quarter, the, the, Liber the, the Lynx were beaten up on the Liberty so much that the WNBA had to make sure that they try to keep this game close however they could. So what did they do in the second quarter? They called six fouls against the Lynx and one on the Liberty. The halftime count was seven to two. If you got into the third quarter, by the end of the third quarter, it was 14-5 until the final 30 seconds. So it was 14-6 going into the third, fourth quarter. You tell me, man. Like, it, it, it's Nafisa Collier, who is better than I am. I would have lost my shit. Um, I was getting held a little bit. It was a little hard to make a shot. Who fouled out? She, and she fouls out, no less, of course. How many fouls did uh? <laughs> how many fouls did Brianna Stewart have? That's where it gets funny because she fouls constantly. Brianna Stewart. Oh, she had one foul. <laughs> and Ionescu, one foul. Brianna Stewart, one foul. Lainey Hamilton, one foul. Sabali, three fouls. Thornton had five. Thornton uses her fouls, man, and she gets a lot more. It's with a lot more of them. D bitch had three and John Quell Jones had three. Where on the other end, you got Carlton with five, Collier fouls out, and every starter has three fouls for the Minnesota Lynx. It just doesn't feel right that you lose a series with that level of discrepancy, Reeves said. We don't have a team that whines and complains and all that stuff. Well, you, you should start. You should start because you got fucked. Sometimes it probably hurts us, maybe being a little more, I don't know, something. But you have a star player like Fee that just, I don't get it. I don't get how she can be held and go to the basket and get hit. And then a marginal at best, at best, sends their best player to the free throw line. I mean, that's tough. It's tough to swallow. Asked to respond to Reeves' comments, Liberty coach Sandy Brondello responded of the referees. I thought they were pretty fair. Of course you did, Sandy. Because you were the one crying about them in game four. You were the one crying about them nonstop in game four. The last game, that's where you give in, you get give and take. Game number one, we should have won that game. I have so much respect for Cheryl, and I have so much respect for the Minnesota Lynx team because, man, that was ugly, but we found a way to win. I'm really proud of our team, how resilient we were, how we stuck together, and how we continue to trust each other. That was our word, our word today. Just trust the process. We found a way to win. Both coaches previously critiqued the officiating in this series with Reeve calling out how Collier was officiated differently than Stewart after game three and Brondello pointing out that the foul, foul call disparity after game four when the Liberty shot nine free throws to the Lynx is 20. Yeah, that did happen. It, it did. It absolutely happened. It did happen. And uh, so officiating, it's not that hard. Uh, let me see that. Sorry, my, my screen just switched. Officiating, it's not that hard, Reeves said. When someone is being held, be consistent. If you don't want to call it a hold at one end, don't call it on the other. Be consistent. Every team asks for that. Sandy asked for that last game. Three of the games in this series, we're talking about the same damn thing. This is a championship for both teams. Let them decide it. What contact is legal should be the same for both teams. This isn't that hard. So it's disappointing. I mean, congratulations to Liberty on their first championship. It took them 28 years. Congrats to them. We were that close to our fifth. Just didn't happen. It was terrible, man. It was terrible. It, it was terrible. To have a game decided like that is just flawed. It's foul and it's flawed. And, and it's, it's just what the WNBA is. The WNBA made sure to change the officiating at, at, in the second quarter because from the second quarter on, the officiating was so one-sided, it was ridiculous. It was so one-sided. The second and third quarters were so bad. The fourth quarter was not as bad 
until it was just as bad. Traveling twice on Brianna Stewart. She gets away with a freaking charge that, I mean, a foul, it really wasn't a foul, but it would have been a charge of anything. And they give her a def. I mean, it's just so bad. So bad. Feel bad for the Minnesota Lynx. I feel bad for Nafisa Collier. Uh, but, but this is the, the, the WNBA officiating is so is, is atrocious. And until they do something about it, it makes it really hard to, to take the league seriously. It's hard to take this league seriously at all because they don't take their they don't take officiating as important. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of what Cheryl Reeve had to say? You know, uh, do you agree with her? Do you not agree with her? Because I sure should do agree with her. But you are also entitled to your opinion. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave a comment. Be sure to pound that like button. Jump over to Rudy's rant. Subscribe over there. Jump and make sure you drop that subscription. You subscribe here as well. Because we love having y'all and we want to keep on growing this channel. Thank you so much. Facts over feelings. Come on down.